He is a dancer, songwriter, and woodcarver. He also is an ambassador for Simshian culture. We call it art now, but uh, it, was, uh, it was a way for people to say, this is who I am, this belongs to me, this is my clan, or this is my, my crest, this is my family history, carved and painted on, on wood. Mr. Boxley says Christian missionaries were a strong influence in his community while he was growing up. As a result, he learned little about his native culture. While working as a teacher, he began researching the history of his people. In 1986, he left teaching so that he could spend time woodworking and telling others about Simshian culture. So I came along at the right time. Our people really needed a shot in the arm for our culture. It, was, it wasn't uh, very prominent uh, after all that missionary influence and years and years of not having anyone be in, the, in that kind of position to, to guide. Almost 30 years later, he completed his 70th totem pole. It is now part of the permanent collection at the National Museum of the American Indian in Washington, D.C. We don't use sandpaper, so we use the knives and the, and the chisels to uh, get it as smooth as possible, get the lines clean. This totem pole started as a seven meter long piece of red cedar. Mr. Boxley began carving it months ago at his home in Washington State. This one um, is going to uh, be seen by millions over the next hundred years or whatever, you know, and it's not just me and my son, it's all of my people that are proud, my tribe. On the day when the totem pole officially became part of the museum, Mr. Boxley's family and friends performed for a crowd. Then, the pole was shown for the first time. Thanks to David Boxley, the museum is able to show a fine example 